Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Megan, I do sewing, embroidery, and other crafty things. And today we will be embroidering this adorable, adorable crew neck sweatshirt. Um, like I said, it is embroidered. I'll show you all the materials that I use. Um, I do use my Rakoma MT1501 embroidery machine. It is a 15 needle embroidery machine. Um, as you can see, I did not use that many colors with this design. I think I use about uh, five colors. Um, but you can easily also embroider this on a uh, flatbed embroidery machine. Um, this design, however, is larger than six by 10, so just kind of keep that in mind. I got this embroidery design from urbanthreads.com. I will leave a link below down to this specific pattern. Um, and then um, also, uh, this is also from um, urbanthreadsdesigns.com, so I recommend that you check them out. This is not sponsored, but as you can see, their stitch work is absolutely immaculate. It all stitches within the lines that it's supposed to, so I highly recommend that you check them out. So like I said, I use my multi-needle machine for this. I'll show you how to place your design, um, where to exactly to figure out how to place it. Um, I also use my Mighty Hoops, particularly my 11 by 13 inch Mighty Hoop, which by the way, I may or may not have a video coming all about Mighty Hoops, different sizes, what I recommend that you get if you do get a multi-needle machine and a link to where you can purchase your Mighty Hoops. So like I said, we'll go over materials, step-by-step step, how to hoop it, how to embroider it, set the colors on the embroidery machine, um, and then start stitching. And then I'll show you how to, what stabilizer to use, how to cut it, and how to finish your project. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a fantastic day. All right, so let us go over the materials that you'll need for this project. Of course, you will need a sweatshirt, which I am using the Gildan Heavy Duty Cotton Sweatshirt. For this particular one, I'm making an extra large because I need two more for uh, my craft show. Next, I usually use large rolls of stabilizer. So this is cutaway stabilizer that I got from Amazon. I'll link below where I get my um, the exact link that I use to purchase the stabilizer. I believe it is 12 inches um, wide, I guess. Um, so it's perfect for this, for this project. Next, I will be using Mighty Hoops. Um, for my adult shirts, I use the 11 by 13 inch Mighty Hoop. Um, I'm planning on recording a video all about Mighty Hoops, what they are, what different sizes I recommend for different projects, and everything like that. So stay tuned for that. And then, of course, you will need a pair of scissors to cut the stabilizer after your embroider, and a pair of little scissors to trim any of the loose threads after your project finishes. And then you also need some tub adhesive spray to temporarily adhesive the stabilizer to it because this hoop does not have a backing holder. So I will have to manually go and um, put place it on the back of the shirt, but I'll show you momentarily how you can do that. Then of course you'll need a embroidery machine. Um, you can use any sort of embroidery machine for embroidery. Um, the smallest you can do is a four x four, which you can buy four x four embroidery machines at Walmart and all different sorts of stores such as that. Um, but for this case, I will be using my Rakoma MT1501 embroidery machine um, that I purchased this summer. So let us get started. So first, I'm gonna move everything out of the way. So this is the front where the brackets are. So at the top here, I'm just going to kind of take it all apart. And I'm going to put the front to the side because right now we just need the backing. So then you will get your stabilizer. As you can see, it fits perfectly in this frame and cut it to be wide enough for this project. And just to note, I usually use cutaway stabilizer for my shirts, adult shirts, and then usually my kids shirts, I usually like to use tearaway and no-show poly mesh, just because this stabilizer might irritate children's skin, but it doesn't usually bother adults. So that's why I just use my plain cutaway stabilizer. 
Um, so then what you're gonna wanna do is put this to the side. I'm just gonna put it up here on my ledge. Grab your, your shirt and you are going to turn it inside out. Of course, with removing this tag on the front. Don't want to embroider that onto your shirt. And luckily it looks like there's already a natural line with this shirt, so I don't have to make any markings for the center point. All right. So now you're gonna want, this is it inside out, so here is the back. Here's the front, you want the back of the front to be showing for you and the tag to be in the back. So what I usually like to do is I just kind of like to shake the shirt, making sure it's nice and straight. Lay it down nice and flat, try to remove any wrinkles. And now what you're gonna do is grab your piece of stabilizer. So now you're gonna use your temp adhesive spray to of course temporarily adhesive this stabilizer. So for this project, I'm going to put it about an inch below the top of the, um, the bottom of the collar here. So that's kind of what I'm using as a standing, standing point because you'll pretty much be using the entire length of this to embroider out your shirt. So I want it to be towards the top, but also kind of go over the cleavage area. The person has that. Want it to look nicely and be placed perfectly. I usually recommend for people, if you don't know how big your embroidery design is gonna be, print it out. So then you can kind of have a better idea of where exactly you want to lay your project. So now, putting my arm in, making sure the stabilizer is all good to go. Doesn't have to 100% perfectly go onto the shirt but as long as it's in the general area, then that's fine because we will be using the magnetic hoop to kind of make sure that it is nice and tight and everything and that the stabilizer won't come out. So now after you turn your shirt inside out, as you can see, the tag is right here. You're going to want to grab the back of your mighty hoop, which this goes at the bottom always and this goes at the top always. So make sure because I once did it like this before and it messed up my machine. So making sure that the back of this is going towards the top. So now I'm gonna lift this up in here because you want this to be behind the shirt. Keep putting my arm in just to make sure that the stabilizer is okay. Everything seems fine. And then now what you're gonna do is for my project here, it looks like there's a straight line automatically. So I'm going to move my project. There will be a middle point here. So here are the sides and there's a dot in the middle. So I'm just gonna follow that middle dot just to make sure that I have it perfectly centered. So I'm going to slowly move it Okay, that's good at the top. At the bottom, there you go. All right, so that feels good. Now I'm gonna place my hands to the sides, making sure that it's nice and even. And I'm making sure that I'm catching the stabilizer on the top and the bottom. So that looks pretty good. And then the top, then you'll grab your top of your Mighty Hoop the warning label here, that goes towards the top. So um, that's how you can usually tell because underneath here, there's no warning label. So that's how you know it's the bottom and the warning labels go on the top. So now making sure everything is nice, I'm going to put it down there. Let's see, so that actually looks pretty good. I think the line that they have on here is a little bit off center. so. It being on um, this area that looks makes it look nice and centered. It's perfectly centered with the tag and it's nice and taut because it'll sound like a drum. That's how you know that you have your project nicely, um, nicely hooped. So that's why I love using these Mighty Hoops because you don't have to worry about anything popping out because it's all with the magnet. 
So now we're going to go to the machine and I'll show you how to program in the steps and then we'll get to embroidering. All right, I'm just gonna turn on my machine. And for this design, I already have it programmed into my machine, including the color changes. I've just been making them over and over again. So I'll have this pop up. All right, now I'm going to put it through the arms here. So there are little clasps for the arms. That's just where you put in the, um, whatever these metal things are called. So you make sure they slide in, snap into place. And now I will bring you guys forward to show you what my screen looks like. All right, so this is what your project will look like when you pull it up. Um, so this file icon is where you can pull up your files, but like I said, I already have it programmed into my machine. So now if you wanna do a trace of your design to make sure that it is perfectly within the hoop, that it won't hit anything, you will wanna hit this lock icon. Enter embroidery status, you click okay. So what that does is it locks your embroidery design into place. So now what you're gonna do is I want it to be on needle one. That's how I wanna be able to tell what, um, based on the first needle, if my design is perfectly in the hoop. So I'm just gonna hit this icon because right now it's telling me that it's on needle seven, which I want it to be on needle one. So I'm gonna click one. My machine will automatically move and I'm just gonna hit okay. Now, I'm going to hit this trace icon. That's how you can trace your design. And then this is a button that you can use to change the size of your hoops. So let me zoom out. And I'll show you what it looks like when you trace your design. Let me see if I can move you guys down a bit. So this looks like it's the best that I can do. So now I'm gonna hit that button and I'm gonna push, this is my first needle, I'm gonna push it down, click that button. Now it's gonna do a trace. And at the top here, I'm just making sure that it's not going to hit my uh, needle or anything like that. So let me do another trace because I think it hit my tripod here. So let's just do another. So right now it is not hitting anything, including the top, so that looks good. So now we'll go back to the screen. All right, so now you're gonna wanna set your colors. This is where you wanna go into your embroidery software because unfortunately with the Recoma, it does not tell you what steps that it's doing. So as you can see, I have my steps programmed. If you're doing applique and you want it to pause on anything, you would click this pause button. But anyways, so like I said, I already have these colors programmed in, but if I had my Embrilliance designs um, pulled up, I would notice that the first step it would do is slay, which I want to be in green. And as you can see, this one right here is needle number one, but behind it is number two, and then behind that is number three, which is green. So I'm gonna hit green for that step. Next, it is going to do the uh, Santa at the top with the reindeer. So Santa sleigh, which I want to be in white. So that is color number 12. Number three is going to be the tinsel. Um, so that's gonna be the leafy part of it. Number 10 is gonna be the uh, stem part, I guess, of the, the leafy part. So it'll kind of create the lines for that. This next step is going to be the, um, the berries, I guess, or cherries, whatever it's called. Sorry if this is so bright, let me, there you go, now you can see. So like I said, this fifth step is gonna do the cherries. This next part is going to do the day at the bottom, so that is gonna be in white. And then the all part, which is going to be in the gold. So I have all my colors programmed. 
So my machine is all good to go. I double checked making sure that the design won't hit the hoop. Um, so I think we are going to get ready to start embroidering. And I'll show you some clips of it embroidering out. Um, like I said for this, there's no applique involved so I didn't have to put in any stops. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the design. So I'm just gonna hit this button here. And then now, once I hit start right here, then it'll start working on the project. So I'll check in with you guys momentarily and we will get to embroidering. Project is now done. Here is a close up of what it looks like. Turned out perfect. So now you're going to get your little scissors, trim any random loose threads. Okay, got another one over here. All right. Next, you take it out of the hoop. And these hoop marks will go away, by the way. They won't stay there forever. Um, then I'm gonna snap the hoop back into place so everything is where it needs to be. All right. Now you're gonna turn it inside out, and now you're going to trim away the stabilizer with your larger scissors. Make sure you pull away from the um, temp adhesive if it's still sticking so you can get as close to a cut as you can. All right, so here's a stabilizer all cut out. Turn it right side out. And there is the design. So let me show you a close up of it and we can conclude this tutorial. All right, so here is the finished product. This is an extra large, so the design won't look humongous, but I think it's still very cute. Perfectly centered, it'll line up perfectly when somebody wears it. Um, so yeah, so here's a close up. Very, very cute. So these are great projects to make for Christmas gifts or birthday gifts. Um, that's why I love embroidering these crewnecks, just because they're really easy. This one I actually embroidered as well. Um, both of these designs I got from urbanthreads.com. They have so many super cute designs. Um, in the back here, I'm actually embroidering out another one of their designs, which stitched out immaculately. Um, it's a gingerbread design that I'm making for an apron to sell at the craft show. So tons and tons of cute designs there. This is not sponsored, by the way. Just a, an FYI, if you're looking for different um, embroidery uh, websites outside of Etsy, that is a good one. Um, embroidery Library is also a good one. Um, Stitchtopia. Um, applique or Alphalicious Applique, that's a good one as well. I think they also have an Etsy shop, but these designs stitch out great. This is the largest design you can do on this machine. Um, when it comes to placement for these designs, I really um, print out a copy of what the design will look like and place it on the chest area um, because some people are more of a chest than others and I just kind of want to make sure that either way it will be placed perfectly for anyone. Um, so yeah, that's something that I would recommend. So then for this design, since it's not, doesn't use the uh, entire 11 by 13 Mighty Hoop, I just kind of placed it where I wanted it to be and I kind of lined it up based on the perimeters of the Mighty Hoop. So that kind of helped me determine where exactly to put this design. But when it came to this design, it like literally took up the entire um, 11 inch, 11 inch uh, diameter or width diameter, there we go. So that's why I just kind of placed it to kind of towards the top and not completely towards the top. So it'll line up great. So it's kind of above the 
uh, the chest here and then it kind of goes to there. So um, if you guys are embroidering any of these, definitely keep that in mind because some designs are smaller, others are bigger. Um, so just definitely keep the placement in mind because you don't want it to be too high or too low. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, stay tuned for day three of Logmas, which will continue tomorrow. Um, I will probably be doing a video all about Mighty Hoops, where you can get them, different sizes that I recommend, how to put them together and everything, because when it comes to my Rakoma, absolute, absolute game changer. So I'll go into more detail about that in tomorrow's video. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please, if you have not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. I am so close to um, 700 subscribers. I think right now I'm at 679, so I'm super, super close. Um, so definitely stay tuned for future content. As you know, it's Vlogmas, so I'm gonna be posting a video or doing a live every single day um, that within uh, the whole month of December leading up to Christmas. Um, and then I'll probably also do a video about goals for my next year and everything and what I accomplished um, from this year and everything. So um, definitely stay tuned for more tutorials, embroidery, sewing, day in the lives, uh, lives, all different sorts of things. And yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next video and have a fabulous, fabulous day. Hopefully if you celebrate Christmas, you're decorating for Christmas time. Um, or if you don't, hopefully you're still decorating for the winter time. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and a fantastic weekend and I will see you tomorrow.